Hello, ZFam Mama, and today I want to show you my homeschool hall. So we have a place, if you're in the Sacramento area, it's called A Brighter Child. So much cool stuff for homeschooling. I wouldn't say like a lot of games. They have a good section of them, but not like some of the other homeschool stores that have a lot of games and a lot of paper, that kind of stuff. You're not going to really find that here. But this store is really fun. It's got great manipulatives and posters and tons as you can see this is just one of our okay it's kind of a little bit of a bigger haul for us this this uh, semester but i like to use up all my money that i get for homeschooling so that i don't lose it so might as well use up everything i can so over here you're going to see this is a lot of the science and i'll just kind of show you some of it science and history my two daughters actually teach science and history to grace and so this is kind of their department from this side over with a little art thrown in. Art, you know, of course goes for both things. There can be coloring associated with your the English side of it or math or that kind of thing. But most of this, like these oil pastels, good company, great products. Um, but of course, you're not gonna use oil pastels, say in English or math. <laughs> so we got her this chocolate fix logic game. Grace loves anything that kind of uses your mind and challenges your brain. Another great thing is a 15 puzzle. Her last one actually broke, so she got another one. This has, it's kind of like your Rubik's cubes and that kind of thing, where you move the numbers. Well, she can do it upside down, you know, where the numbers are 15s up here and one's down here. So we mix it up for her or have her inside. There's a little sheet that tells you different ways that you can scramble it. So this is a really cool thing and I love it because it comes with a case. I'll show you maybe if I can open it here. <laughs> Um, it comes with a little case so it can go with you. You can go in the car, throw it in her backpack when you're traveling or just around town doing errands. So here's the little puzzle. Oh. Boom, pop that off. So you can move it around and then she can come, you know, unscramble it. But then when she's not using it, it fits in this handy dandy little snap case. So it's a little, little yellow ha, leather pouch that it just slides right into. So there's that, and we'll move that over here for her. And then we got this new thing. So it looks more like it should be for preschool or something, but it can work for any age. So when you press the button, it tells you different activities to do. Fly like an owl or do jumping jacks. So it's a really cool, we tried it out at the store and she really liked it. It's something she can do for PE where she can just go off and do it by herself. Or, oh. So that's a pretty fun little uh, thing. Does warm ups and like it says, 65 exercises. So that's actually really fun. Then I got her this hundreds board. What I'm actually going to have her do right now, we're doing multiplication. It's laminated, but I'm going to turn it around and do her. Does it go to 10? <laughs> do her multiplication chart without looking at anything. She's going to write the numbers and then she's going to fill in all the blanks with a white, um, yeah, whiteboard marker. So we'll see how well she's doing. Wow, this thing's still running. Let's stick it over there. <laughs> all right, there's that. And then this is a really nice book. This is for sign language. We've been teaching her sign language. The whole family's kind of learning it. And I just think that's such a cool thing to be able to you recognize people who are different than you. Nobody in our family is hard of hearing, but to know there are people out there and to learn some basic sign language signs is really, a, I think, a cool thing. So this is a really neat book. Kind of shows you some of the, um, you know, words to use and it's got some activities in it. But we thought this would be a really great book. Then some fun things coming up on spring break and summer. We got these activities, uh, maze and dot to dots, and then crossword and word searches. So I'm really big on keeping the kids' brains active during the summer. I don't sit down, we don't do homeschool. My ones that go to, you know, traditional school, they don't have, you know, homework per se. But I do have them read. Reading is huge. We have a major challenge around here, reading like 10 to 12 books in a summer. But I also like them to do things like this. Color, word searches, keep your brain. You know, Sudoku is another one they can do. I like them to have different activities. We don't just get to swim and play video games all day. <laughs> so those are some really cute, you know, cool, fun books that we'll take care of spring break and even summertime. 
Grace is obsessed with horses. So we found her this book that kind of goes over the horse's anatomy, but it's also a coloring book. So we thought, well, that's fun for her. And then a few of them back here, I think it teaches you like how to draw a horse, which is gonna be really exciting for her. <laughs> okay, there's that, that. Okay, this one I'm really excited about. So this is like a daily starter. So each day there's something in here, like it says, duck, what does a baby duckling become when it first goes into the water? So they can give a guess, you can talk about it, and then as you move on back here, it gives you, if Tom's father is Jerry's son, how is Jerry related to Tom? Hmm, so she can sit down and figure out what's your answer to that. So just kind of things to get the brain going in the morning, you know, before you really jump into math or science or history or anything like that. Really looking forward to that because I love things like that. Then we have book one and two, and they, I don't know if this goes up to book four or just three. Next year I'll be moving up to the next level. But these books are really cool. We're really working on her writing. Again, if you've watched my other videos, IEW, great writing program. Really teaches the kids to think deeper, come out of your basic three sentence, write this, how to write a title. So that's a really good program. Side note. Um, so anyways, this has little exercises that she can do. And then at the end, it has a checklist. Does each sentence express a complete thought? Does each sentence begin with a capital letter and end with a punctuation mark? Did you include interesting details about your subject? Did you use adjectives and adverbs? If your hand, is your handwriting clear and easy to read? So just quick, easy checklists. And I think these could probably be done at lots of different ages. For our grace, we're a little behind when it comes to the writing just because she had vision. So hopefully we're going to get her caught up here soon, <laughs> probably next year. Which leads me into uh, handwriting. So I have this, which is cursive, and I was really hoping to get to it this year, but as time's going on, it's looking like this is probably gonna be a fourth grade thing, um, where she can write in cursive, which I really do. I know they don't teach a whole lot of it, but I think it's important for these kids to learn. So just some practice, writing the letters, writing a few words, you know, that start with it, capitals and whatnot. So that will probably be moved to fourth grade. But handwriting, this we will start using actually this week. Again, I, if you've watched my other videos, you know some of her words have floated on the lines. And so I really wanna work on just making sure she has really pretty writing. I know me being a girl, I always like to have pretty writing. So I think it's really important to get the basics down and give the self-esteem that goes, you can do it, it's great. So this is what we'll be starting this year um, this month actually, in March, as we're getting close to the end of the year. And we'll move that on. What else do we have? Beyond the Code, another shout out. Um, Explode the Code are the first books they do. And they go over things like sounds and oh, there might even be rhyming in there. I, there's like six books before you get to Beyond the Code. And this one's really great because um, it's just really basic things. Yes, no, or can't tell. Did Nelson leave his dog in the kennel? So looking at, I'm gonna see if this has the, sorry, oops, sorry. This does, it has the story, and then it has quick questions to answer. And then they can finish drawing the picture over here. So as you can see, and then it goes into, you know, what words, drawing a line to make, make words, you know, connect, that kind of thing. So. This is really, I'll tell you, such an easy, and I'm sure you can get some of this stuff at other places, maybe Amazon or other stores near you. Explode the code and be on the code. They're so easy, they're so fun. It's not a lot of words, they've got bigger font as you can see. I highly, highly, highly recommend these. We've used Explode the Code since I think Grace is in first grade. And it has been one of the most incredible things for her. Even with having the vision issues, that's one thing that she just really excelled at. There's that. Another fun thing is how to report on books. So again, this is giving them like an outline. You know, when you go to, you read a book, now what things can you pull out? Just gives them an idea. And I think the whole thing for me with writing is, basic writing is great, but how do we give more expression? What if you want to be a writer? How, can I, how would you write? What books do you like reading? You know, how do they write? What do the, they use the same words? Or do you notice that there's a lot of different words, different adjectives, different verbs that they're using to keep you interested? 
So that's a really, I'm really big on reading and writing if you can't tell. <laughs> and then we have Charlotte's Web. And this is a study guide. So we'll read the book with her. And then there's a study guide that we'll use. And we liked this one because it has vocabulary and comprehension questions and discussion questions and enrichment. So I like things that aren't just your basic, what was the story about? Here's four vocabulary words. What can you discuss? What, you know, write something about it. What was your favorite part? Really going beyond just, that was a good story. And I like it because I like the pig in the story. Okay, but why? What made that pig different? Tell me about the pig. Give me some idea of the character of the pig. You know, that kind of thing. So when I look for study guides, I like a large variety. Unfortunately, I have to go back because of the homeschool we're at. There's this whole nothing can be Christian, no curriculum whatsoever. The homeschool won't pay for it. And so, or the, the charter school won't pay for it. Well, because the publisher is known to be a Christian one, I have to go back and it's um, Big House in the Little Woods, which everybody knows those stories, right? And Sarah Plain and Tall, two books we want to read with grace and do the study guides too. So we're allowed to do it, but the school won't pay. So I'm going to go back and pick those two things up that didn't make it in my order because of that. So hope you found something you like. Enjoy homeschooling yourself and... Give me a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Have a really blessed day, y'all. Bye.